think the very first question one has is, um, you know, there's those combinations that you just never expect to see in the wild, and that would be quantum and <laughs> quantum Bigfoot, Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> together in a title. Uh, so maybe you can just start us out by explaining why the quantum Bigfoot? What, what are we getting at here? Well, what we're getting at is, uh, as many of your listeners may know, I encounter these creatures in the Sierra Nevadas uh, mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, east of you there, south. <laughs> And uh, this was in the 70s, and uh, we started recording their vocalizations and having some mysteries around them, too, which I didn't talk about for a long time. Just anomalies, things that you couldn't explain with classical science. Al Berry, who was the investigative reporter from Reading, actually, uh, he worked for the Record Sets Searchlight the newspaper then. And uh, he, uh, he was invited, we invited him to camp, he thinking he was going to find a hoax because it's kind of an incredible <laughs> story. But he heard the sounds and thought they were worth listening or investigating. So we, we took him into camp in 1972. He ended up recording uh, uh, sounds and uh, still thinking they were hoaxes. Somebody had to hoax us. But this is 8,400 feet elevation, <laughs> and it's eight miles into the wilderness. And it's, it's really an imposing trail to get to, an imposing area. Uh, gorgeous area, though. It's beautiful. And... Uh, um, so anyway, he went in and he, he had some experiences too, along with us. And, uh, he ended up having those recordings, uh, uh checked by Dr. Curlin, Professor Curlin at the University of Wyoming. He did a year long study and established the sounds were credible. They weren't manipulated. They weren't uh, speeded up, slowed down. Or that, identifiable, I assume. They, they were, uh, above and below and in between all, all over the scope of, uh, vocalizations and way outside the human uh, scope of what we can do and that was interesting uh, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't what academia needed so we kept on and uh, but there was other anomalies going on up there uh, lights and uh, sounds that we could not identify uh, very very unusual sounds outside of what you could explain with classical science like I say and uh, Al Berry had a master's degree in science, and he said that uh, whatever you do, try to stay with science on this thing, or you'll never be able to get anybody to listen to you. So uh, I started reaching in, well, how does, how does science explain this? How do they explain lights going by you and things like that going on? And these sounds like your camp's being tore apart, and you look outside this little shelter we had there, and nothing's changed. And you don't know how to put your finger on that. It's like trying to nail a jello to the wall, you know? So. Anyway, um, that got me into looking into quantum physics because I realize, and everybody does, I think, we live in a three-dimensional environment, a three-dimensional world, but there's more dimensions yeah. according to physics. So um, I think it was uh, Nikola Tesla said that uh, what well, one man calls God, another man calls quantum physics. Yeah. So <laughs> those who have thrown religion away and out, outside the door because they didn't go with religion, Believe it or not, your spiritual being, according to uh, uh, Stephen Hawkins and according to Einstein, energy, which we are all made of at the most minute level, does not die. It only changes form. So religions will call that heaven. Quantum physics calls that uh, dimensions. There are at least 11 uh, established by mathematics of uh, <clears throat> quantum physics. And uh, so anyway, I started looking into that and uh, it started coming together for me. Uh, it started answering some of the questions I had. So, um, and I think, and it was a uh, doctor, uh, well, who was the astronaut? He was uh, Mitchell, Edgar Mitchell. He said it takes classical and quantum sciences together to have clear perception. Mm. I yeah. think that's a pretty good thing to yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, quantum quantum science, you know, is science in its most extreme form of basically measuring things without using any of your human senses.